you were saying you caught um, the wave of robotics, really, and you guys have stayed on top of it now. Um, and also, it seems to me from talking now, you guys also caught the open source wave, which is really exciting uh, to be on both of those. Like just you invested in open source and the community and the amount of code out there and the quality of code has just grown and grown. How would you, or what advice would you give to a startup that is looking to do a hardware robotic startup and they're just beginning now and they don't have all this infrastructure or expertise? So the first, the first bit of advice I'd give is to not, is to know what you want know what value you're bringing to the world and partner as much as possible around that value. And what that means is when we started our auto division, we had to build the robots from scratch. We had to build the autonomy from scratch, the fleet manager, the UI, all of our continuous integration systems. We did a bunch of like internal upgrades to like gazebo to make it fit in continuous integration systems, like control software, a lot like, all of this stuff, we did all that from scratch. But now you can basically partner or buy a lot of that stuff off the shelf. Um, and I would really encourage any new startup in robotics to start with that and to not try to build everything from scratch, have a very good idea of what they're bringing to the table. And if I look at a, um, yeah, if, if I look at the way, you know, a typical startup, you're either bringing a new technology to an existing market um, or you're bringing a new market or you're, you have, you're taking an existing technology and applying it to a new market. Right? so, you know, the Airbnb and the Uber, for example, like they were bringing, they were, they had a market hypothesis and they were bringing some, some pretty standard technology there. Like at the time, everyone had smartphones. Um, and obviously we all still have smartphones, but us, we had, we had a, a newer technology, which was being brought to an existing market, which was materials handling, right? And I'm using the auto example here. Um, and the, but you want to pick one, right? So uh, are you, and these days there's just so much technology out there. And really, I think a lot of the opportunity is all these new markets where you can apply robotics. Ooh, yeah. And, and that means not inventing the wheel along the way. And you know, part of this, I, we spent a ton of time earlier on in this conversation talking about the ways that, that ClearPath engages with people. So obviously we can support those, those sorts of customers. We've supported startups along the way. If, and, and you know what, if, if they're working with us and then the startup turns around and says, you know what, I've got an order for a thousand um, and we're gonna go and outsource that stuff to let's say Jabil, for example, and because they're gonna give us the best deal, hey, that's cool. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you're succeeding. Right. But <laughs> there are companies like us and then there's all sorts of off the shelf technology out there as well that can help you along the way. So that would be the, the real thing I'd say to those new robotic startups. Like don't try to do all the hardware and all the autonomy and all the fleet management and all the infrastructure. Use just, what you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use what you can. Like I, I have, I have spent those budgets, I know how much it costs and I know, <laughs> yeah. I know the stresses that it brings you and it's, it's not worth it. There's other ways to do it now, at least. 